Hello, my name's Emily and I'm one of the F1s. Um, today we're going to be talking to you about high flow oxygen therapy. So what is high flow? High flow isn't just like your nasal cannula. Obviously there's a higher flow, but the air is heated to 37 degrees and it is humidified to 100%. And this is to prevent any damage to the nasal or respiratory system. The flow rate and the air and spire concentration can also be altered throughout to meet the patient's requirements. So here's an image just to outline from nasal cannula to humidifier. Hello, my name is Seham. I'm going to talk to you now about the physiological benefits of high flow nasal oxygenation. So I'm going to talk to you through an acronym of high flow. So the H stands for heated and humidified gas. So the, the gas is heated up to 37 degrees and humidified up to 100% relative, uh, relative humidity. And the reason for this is it reduces airway surface dehydration, improves secretion clearance and decreases atelectasis. It also reduces airway inflammation and decreases energy expenditure. The I stands for inspiratory demands and these are better met by elevated inspiratory flow demands. And so increasing the flow rate actually makes it easier for, the, for these inspiratory demands to be met. The next one is F, which stands for functional residual capacity. This increases the FRC by a delivery of PEEP, which stops the airways from collapsing at the end of expiration. Lighter, L. So as these, this uh, nasal cannula is a lot more uh, kind of comfortable and more easily tolerated than the facial masks. There's a higher compliance and it's better tolerated by the patient. Oh, oxygen dilution. So this minimizes the oxygen dilution by meeting flow demands and so you can get a much higher oxygen concentration. W, wash out of dead space. Because you're using high flow rates of oxygen, the partial pressure of CO2 can actually be decreased. And so this can aid a little bit of ventilation, although this is not as good as non-invasive ventilation methods. So I'm now gonna to talk to you about the indications of nasal high flow. So the main indication of nasal high flow is acute hypoxic respiratory failure, i.e. type one respiratory failure with a low PO2, but a normal PCO2. And this is normally found in patients who have come in with pneumonia. The other, the other kind of main indication is post-extubation. And so patients who had nasal high flow after extubation had a reduced need for reintubation. Third is Pre-oxygenation prior to intubation, especially for patients with a difficult airway. This includes patients with a higher BMI and also patients with anatomical variants. And finally, nasal high flow can be used for patients in which intubation is not uh, suitable. And so this can provide the ceiling of care for patients who require oxygen but would not be suitable for intubation. So now we're going to talk about the contraindications and when not to use high flow. So this isn't a replacement for ven uh, mechanical ventilation for those who need it. And if needed to escalate, do so. Never use on someone with a low GCS. Nasal and facial fractures, always make sure that if it's a trauma, you're checking CT heads and not putting it on then. Epitaxis. And airway obstruction is also a no-go no with this. Um, and always check, obviously, the delivery of oxygen to the patient won't happen if the airway is obstructed. So now we're going to talk about the setup of high flow. Hello, my name is Seham Akab. I'm one of the clinical fellows at Northampton General Hospital. Today I'm going to speak to you about nasal high flow machine um, and the setup and all of the components. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is um, this part. So this comes in a once time use only bag. Okay, and you have the humidica humidification chamber here. Okay, humidification chamber will slot in nicely onto this little machine over here. So you can see that 
that slots in nicely like that, okay? Um, and then we're going to discuss about how we fill the humidification chamber, okay? Humidification chamber needs to have some water, so the source of our water is this sterile water here. What you do is you spike the bag and attach the bag onto there, okay? Which I'm not going to do at the moment. Um, this water will then fill the humidification chamber um, up to the level. You switch the machine on. You decide if it's uh, invasive or non-invasive ventilation. In this case, it will be non-invasive ventilation. And this will heat it up to 30 degrees, okay? So um, the, next the next thing we're going to talk about is the tubing here, okay? So we have two tubes here. We have one tube which goes to the oxygen flow meter and another tube which goes onto the patient end. So I'm going to talk about this, uh, this one first, okay? So as you can see here, we have this shorter bit of tubing with a peep meter, a uh, peep valve. Sorry, the peep valve is there to um, keep the airways open at the end of expiration, um, and this just attaches nicely here to your flow meter. Okay, so to get to provide the oxygen for this flow meter, you have to attach the machine to the gas supply. Okay. So here we have two tubes, um, two hoses, which are color coordinated. So we've got white for oxygen, which attaches to the wall oxygen in the white port, okay? And then we have black for the medical air, which attaches to the black port here, okay? I'm not gonna actually attach this now, okay? What you have to do before you um, attach the machine is you must calibrate it to air. Okay, so what, what you do here is this is the control panel. This allows you to change the amount of oxygen that's delivered to the patient, the fractional inspired oxygen. So what you can do is press both of these to calibrate it to air. And then once you've calibrated it to air, which is about 21%, you can go up or down on your inspired oxygen fraction. Okay, on the flow meter here, we can deliver oxygen between 20 to 120 litres per minute. Normally, we wouldn't go above 60 for nasal high flow, otherwise we would start to damage the nasal mucosa of the patient, okay? So now we're going to move on to the next bit, which is the patient end and also the sensors, okay? So in order to heat up the, uh, to heat up the water for the humidica humidification, you need to have a filament here, which is this black three-pronged one, okay? And that attaches there to the back okay then you also have a heating sensor which attaches onto there nicely and easily okay and then once you've attached that on there you can just close that like so okay then we move on to the patient end which is this one here so on the patient end you have a humidification sensor which attaches there like so and then on this part, you would attach the nasal cannula, which would be attached onto the patient, which I've got here, okay? So they just slot in like so, okay? So this is very, uh, these are the nasal cannula, which the patients would wear. They're very nice, flexible, and soft. Um, and you've got an adjustable strap, which you can put around the patient, and it makes it a lot more comfortable and uh, user-friendly for them. And it's a lot more tolerable than CPAP and other masks that we may use. Okay, and that's all I'm going to talk to you about today. Thank you very much for your time. Um... As discussed in the video, this is just showing a close up of all of the different sensors that we discussed before. Make sure that the yellow and blue cables are attached to the machine for the humidification. Then take the yellow three-prong cable to the clear blue connector. This is the heating filament. Then attach the blue cable to the first port with the blue bung at the side of the blue tubing. This is the sensor and is very important to be attached. So I'm going to speak to you about flow now, okay? So flow is the amount of oxygen delivered and is usually measured in litres per minute. And this can be 
between 20 to 60 litres per minute while using nasal high flow. Flow is measured on the flow meter which is pictured in the diagram on the right. Start with a low flow and titrate up as tolerated by the patient. This can be controlled by the dial under the flow meter and usually if you start with a very high flow rate patients will not tolerate it well. Flow rate determines the amount of PEEP delivered and so a flow rate of 60 litres per minute generates a mean PEEP of about 5 centimetres of water. OK, so now we're going to talk to you about oxygenation. So oxygenation is the percentage of oxygen delivered to the patient. This is seen on the front of the oxygen control and display panel on the left. And this is viewed as a percentage usually where the calculation sign is. Oxygenation can be changed using a dial on the front of the panel where the arrow is pointing to. And the machine must be calibrated to air before you use it. This is done by clicking the up and down arrows at the same time. It's also good to remember that the percentage of oxygen is used in a referral. So this is what we need to know, not just the flow rate. So just a disclaimer, please don't set up or prescribe high flow oxygen without discussing with a consultant first. This is just to discuss if there are better or alternative options available. So now we move on to troubleshooting. It's our last slide and these are the points that the ODPs point out that people flag up as issues when using high flow. So the plug, although it appears to operate the whole machine, actually only operates the humidifier, so bear this in mind when it flashes up as low battery. Keep an eye on the water levels within the humidification chamber. So if the levels are low, it can cause burns to the respiratory system. So at points, you may need to turn uh, the heating off um, and it still remains humidified. Just keep an eye and the patient will let you know if it becomes too warm. And the device can also malfunction if you leave it to go empty. The oxygen panel is operated by two AA batteries. So these can be found on the side of the panel um, and it's easy just to pop open and just replace the batteries when flashing low. So that's all we've got to talk to you about today. Thank you for listening.